So we're at um, Bicester Heritage Centre in the heart of England and this is Flywheel 2017. Um, I know there's a lot of great, great cars here. Well, let's go and find some Jaguars. Come on. Now, do you call this actually a, a tool room copy or...? I think tool room copy is about the right name for it because it's an exact copy of the works cars in 1955. Long nose, obviously. Long nose, um, high tail fin. The chassis and the body were new, built over 20 years ago. Um, but the engine, gearbox, back axle, brakes, everything is original, numbered parts. I mean, the brakes are Le Mans numbered parts, so you've got the six pot calipers at the front, your wide angle 3 4 head on the engine, ex Hawthorne, works experimental unit EXP4. Yes, I remember it's, a, it's an original engine that was driven. Yeah, it was a works, works engine that held the lap record in May 1956 at Silverstone, driven by Mike Hawthorne. Then it went uh, back into the service department and it, the head did all the cylinder head testing for every single D-type, production D-type, before they were passed to the customers. So they then went to uh, Lindley or Myra yeah. to do the development um, of each customer car with, with that cylinder head on it. And then EXP4 was kept at Mara until uh, 1982, I believe, when it returned to Jaguar, to, to Coventry, uh, where John Pearson bought it okay. from the works. Which is now why it's accepted everywhere as um, you know, a true uh, identity of what the works cars were in period. Exactly, because it's, it's totally authentic in every respect. And you were very kind in asking me to share driving it with you. Now, was it about two years ago? Yeah, and likewise, so you let me drive your E-Type, so um, that was pretty fabulous as well. I've got to say, it was an incredible experience for me. The way they drive, it's, everything is so direct and ev so precise, isn't it? Correct. The steering, you just feel yeah. every little yeah. chunk of time. And in fact, every, every ex-professional racing driver that has driven these, um, and I'm currently driving with an ex-touring car driver called Carl Jones, um, and previous to that, Neil Cunningham. I mean, Frank Sitton has driven them, Wim Percy, Andy Wallace, could go on, Johnny Herbert. They all say it's the most perfect car to drive. It's not the quickest 50 sports car, but it's certainly the most direct and it gives you the most feedback. Uh, and that's why I've raced this, you know, for over 20 years and I've never ever parked with it. And it's fabulous on the road. You can go down the pub in it with the children and it's and turn heads everywhere you go. It is the most perfect car ever built anywhere. And the, and the first time I, I got in one and drove one, I, didn't, I was so sh struck by how solid it felt. I expected it to be rattling and creaking, and, but it's completely solid and you feel like you it's could... It's compliant, isn't it? Yeah. And also, the way they gain speed is just incredible. They just seem to... The, the rate of acceleration seems to, to go up the faster you go. I, I, I love it on the public roads because if you're early morning on a Sunday and you get these bikers out in their super bikes, and they're thinking this old vintage type car, yeah. and suddenly you go whoosh, and you can see them absolutely astounded. <laughs> what in the Lord is that? Um, but conversely, you know, you go to Le Mans, I've raced this uh, several times at Le Mans, and once it hits the Mulsan straight, you realize that this car was built only for that circuit, and maybe Rams as well. But anywhere else, it's a handful. It's lots of opposite lock, and you've got to really work at it. So we're at Bista Flywheel this weekend. We've got a little figure of eight course. Yeah. What's it like driving it? Well, yesterday, uh, both in this and the other car I'm driving, which is a Bentley single-seater, um, in the morning I forgot to do the extra lap. <laughs> and my children so were going, Daddy, you yourself. shortchanged everyone. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so figure of eight's a bit confusing for me. Um, so I'll have to uh, remember to do two laps today, I think. But did you find it was hopping and skipping? Because it's quite a rough surface as well. Yes, but I wasn't pushing that hard, to be honest. I, w I was looking at the straw bales thinking, you know what? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go anywhere near Discretion's that. Discretion's the better part of valour yeah. today, I think. Yeah. But, and the not, actually, the nice thing about an event like Flywheel is you get to see the odd, unique car that you haven't seen for years yeah. um, that isn't raced. Yeah. Uh, and that's always quite special. Several Jaguars, so, which is good to see. We've got a D-type here, we've got two E-types, including my own. 
120 over there. Uh, 120 with our, from our friend Duncan. We're going to have a chat with him in a moment. Um, so there's a reasonable percentage of Jaguars, but there could be more, I think. Well, we'll have to work a bit harder we'll for next year. We'll have to work on Duncan, yeah. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> and the great thing about this event is that we can look at these wonderful cars here, but actually it all makes so much more sense when you can hear them being driven, the noise of the engine, and watch them dynamically through the corners. These corners are a little bit sharp for a D-type, of course. It was designed to race at Le Mans with the uh, three miles straight where it would reach maximum velocity of 190 miles an hour. But anyway, this is a, a lovely way of people getting to see these cars in action where normally they would 3.8 straight six racing engine with no silencing uh, sounding exactly as it should.